Hi everyone, my name is Mario Ferdot and I'll be presenting our work entitled Lambda Graph, Self-Supervised Graph Representation Learning for Antimony Laundry. This work was presented at the third international conference on AI and finance. I'll start by providing some motivation. So as you're all probably aware, money laundering is a, is a serious global issue. An estimated two to 5% of global GDP is laundered annually. That's three to five times the market size of transaction fraud. And to comply with AML regulations, financial institutions must investigate and report money laundering situations. And they do this typically by deploying a rule-based detection system that defines a set of rules aligned with AML regulations. Once a rule is triggered, this is the starting point of an investigation procedure that is carried out by a human analyst that eventually culminates in a decision of either suspicious, at which point a suspicious activity report or a SAR must be filed and delivered to the appropriate institution, or not suspicious, at which point the alert that was raised was a false positive. These investigations are centered around an entity, typically either a customer or an account, and if the financial institution does not comply in reporting money laundering situations, they can face severe civil and criminal penalties. Despite being a very crucial step, reviewing these AML, AML alerts is a very challenging and cumbersome process. And this is because rule-based systems have very high false positive rates, estimated to be over 95%, and because the analysts have to filter through a large bulk of financial movements to look, detect to see if any suspicious activity was 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 in, was performed, and these large bulks of interactions typically require the analysts to look at multiple other entities that uh, interacted with the customer being reviewed, and so navigating this large network of interactions is very challenging. To achieve this, the analysts typically resort to macro views of the data through aggregations of common properties, for example, aggregations through uh, based on the counterpart of the transactions or the amounts of the transactions. And the problem that arises is that doing this macro view of the data may lead to missing the fine grained details of each transaction. Finally, this investigation is very time consuming. More complex cases can take anywhere from a couple of hours to multiple days. And so developing alternative systems that either replace or complement these rule-based systems that are based on machine learning is challenging mainly due to the lack of label availability. And so all the related work that relies exclusively on supervision has very limited applicability in the real world. And the works that rely on uh, unsupervised outlier detection typically do this through manually engineered feature sets. As far as we know, no other work, however, has focused exclusively on one hand on self-supervision and on the other hand, on exploiting the graph structure, uh, graph structure for AML detection. And so our main contributions, as I've alluded, are the development of a fully self-supervised model that represents the financial interactions as a bipartite directed and attributed customer transaction graph that is leveraged to provide these AI-powered insights that can assist the analysts in the review process. We evaluate this model on a real world banking data set and we expose the performance gains over state of the art models typically used in financial use cases. And finally, we provide a visualization and an analysis of the embeddings that are calculated at the level of both transaction and customers. And we highlight how these embeddings can be used to derive additional insights. So I've been talking about uh, insights, but what, what are these insights specifically? So we provide three examples of insights here. On one hand, we have transaction clustering, where we aggregate the data shown to the analyst based on the clusters that form in the embedding space. We have anomaly prediction, where we have an anomaly score for each transaction for that specific customer based on the customer's usual behavior. Then we have behavior, the behavior analysis insight, where we can compare the embedding of customers across time and decide if, be, if the behavior of that customer has started deviating from his norm or if it stayed consistent with that customer. Lombro graph can be seen pictorially here. So we, we take a, a data set of raw transactions and we create this bipartite customer transaction graph. We then have a sampling function that extracts the computational subgraph for the, for the entities that we want to calculate the representations for. 
then this the collection of these subgraphs is passed through an encoder that will generate the representations for every node type. And finally, these representations are leveraged by the decoder, which will output the likelihood of an edge existing between those entities, so between customers and transaction pairs. And since this is a fully self-supervised system, we also need positive and negative labels. We'll see how we achieve that later. So as I've mentioned, we here propose Lombrograph, which is, to the best of our knowledge, the first fully self-supervised model that assists in AML reviewing. We represent the financial transactions as an attributed, directed, bipartite customer transaction graph. So attributed means the node types have feature sets. Bipartite means that one node type only interacts with the other node type and vice versa. And it is directed, so we can recover the direction of the transfer of funds, so we can recover the flows of money. So there are a couple of benefits of using this type of graph. First of all, we maintain the fine-grained nature of the interactions. Second, secondly, we can include additional node or edge types in the future with different feature sets. For example, we could think of including a merchant node type or a card transaction node type. And finally, and most importantly, it allows for the learning of separate latent embedding spaces per node type with different sets of learnable parameters. So this graph, the, this, these types of graphs are represented pictorially here. So we have customers and transactions and directed edges between them. This, the, the, this graph is created based on a raw data set that comprises of transactions for a given period. In our experiment, we use transactions uh, for six months to build this graph. And as I've mentioned already, this the our model is comprised of an encoder and the decoder the encoder is a graph neural network and the decoder is a feed forward anomaly predictor and so the encoder uh, obtains the node embeddings based on the context surrounding it so graph neural networks operate based on a message passing paradigm paradigm so the representations calculated for each node are not calculated in isolation they depend on the other messages that are coming in from the surrounding nodes and so the representations are context aware, which is very beneficial for AML scenarios. And then the decoder leverages these representations, these embeddings, to predict the likelihood of an edge existing between pairs of customers and transactions. And so if the system is trained end to end in this manner, we obtain representations that can be seen as dense representations of behavior. These representations can then be used as additional building blocks that can support multiple other insights. I have two equations here for the encoder and the decoder. So this equation for the encoder here is using the graph attention network uh, message passing operator, which calculates an attention coefficient per edge, which indicates how important that edge is for, that, for, the, for the representation of that node. And the decoder uses these representations, combines them together through a Hadamard product, and then applies a sigmoid nonlinearity to obtain the probability. And as I've mentioned already, our model is trained on the fully self-supervised task of link prediction. And, and to train, we need positive and negative labels. So positive labels in this scenario are pairs of customer transaction links that did in fact exist. And negative labels are pairs of customer transaction links that are sampled through a sampling function. For example, random uniform sampling. And then it is trained through standard binary cross entropy as I've shown here. This is the algorithm for our model. So we receive as input a graph, uh, and, and the number of GNN layers, a neighborhood sampling function, which extracts the computational subgraph from the, for, for a specific set of seed nodes. We have the mini batch size, a edge sampling function, which will dictate our labels and the edge direction or edge type that we're trying to predict. So the first step is to sample our positive and negative labels through the sampling function. We then delete the real edges for that direction that we're trying to predict for the nodes that we sampled. This is done to avoid data leakage. The, we then apply multiple uh, layers of, of graph convolution operators, which will provide our uh, representations for the different node types. And finally, we use the decoder together with these representations that we calculated to obtain the probabilities of the edges existing for all the edges that we sample. Regarding experimental results, we use a real world banking data set whose identity we cannot disclose for privacy reasons. And we generated all of the labels a priori for a given period, and all of the models were evaluated with these labels. 
uh, non-graph baselines, namely the, the MLP and the OHGBM, which is, by the way, the state of the art in most financial data use cases. These baselines inform their predictions exclusively through the feature sets. So we concatenated all of the required and relevant features, and we use those to predict the, the labels. The deep graph infomax, which is a very popular self-supervised GNN objective, was trained using the DGI objective, and then we fine-tune an anomaly predictor decoder on top of these embeddings. For all of these baselines, we run hyperparameter search with 20 different configurations using PPE. And as you can probably see from the table and the rock curves, Alondra Graph consistently outperformed all of the other baselines, specifically compared to the best non-graph baseline, which is the LightGBM model. We obtained a 12 percentual points and a 6 percentual points improvement of AUC and average precision, respectively. We can also see that baselines that leverage and exploit the structural information present in the graph consistently outperform baselines that rely exclusively on the feature sets. And we can also see that uh, jointly training and encode the encoder and decoder on the link prediction task uh, achieves better results than training the encoder on a different self-supervised objective and then fine-tuning the embeddings for the, with, a, with a decoder trained on the, on the link prediction task. And finally, we can observe that all Londra graph variants achieve very high recall for low FPRs, which is not verified by the other model. So specifically for very low FPRs, all Londra graph variants, which by the way, only, only change the message passing operator, all of them achieve consistently high recalls, so above 80% recall. So besides providing this anomaly the score, which is already a very useful insight to provide because it guides the analyst towards specific, potentially suspicious interactions, we also support additional insights. One of these insights is the transaction clusters. So we can apply a clustering algorithm on the, the embeddings from, uh, from the latent embedding space. And we can group the transactions shown to the analyst based on these clusters. This has the benefit of aggregating the, the transactions in a more intelligent manner than just aggregating based on, for example, counterpart, because these aggregations now take into account the similarity of the features and also the surrounding structural context of the, of the transaction. This is shown pictorially here. Uh, th these are all of the transactions for five randomly sampled customers. On the left, the transactions are colored according to their customer, and on the right, they're colored according to their anomaly score. And we can see that uh, the cluster is naturally forming the, in the embedding space. And we can also see that transactions that are farther away from their usual uh, non-anomalous clusters uh, have generally a higher anomaly score. We can verify this by the scattered uh, orange transactions and this high anomaly cluster at the top right here. And so we could show the, the, to the analyst transactions aggregated according to these uh, clusters which is beneficial because uh, they, the analysts could uh, focus their attention on a specific cluster of interactions that may be particularly suspicious, such as this one in the top right here, because it has a lot of anomalous movements. And finally, we also provide another insight, which is the customer behavior over time. As I've mentioned, these representations that we calculate can be seen as dense representations of behavior, so it's a very natural thing to do is to compare how these representations evolve over time. And we can do this for a customer as a measure of behavior divergence. This has the benefit of context quickly contextualizing the customer to the analyst. And in particular, the analyst can see if the customer has not shifted drastically in his behavior. And if he had some kind of decision in the past, for example, if that customer has had many false positives in the past, then perhaps this new alert is also a false positive. Or conversely, if the behavior has changed drastically, perhaps the analyst needs to look at this, this customer more carefully. This insight is shown pictorially here. On the left side, we have a scatter plot for the six different randomly sampled customers, where each customer is represented by three points. The, the scatter plot is col colored according to the customer. And here on the right, we have heat maps, cosine similarity heat maps, calculated pairwise for the different snapshots in time. And so we can verify uh, instances of 
consistent behavior here. For example, the purple, brown, and red customer all have very high cosine similarities between subsequent snapshots in time. So their representation stayed about the same. Whereas, for example, the blue, green, and orange customers have lower cosine similarities. So their representations changed quite drastically between one uh, instance, one snapshot of time, and another snapshot of time. And so this is because the, the surrounding subgraph or potentially their, their features changed quite drastically, which could be seen as a measure, measure of behavior divergence. In summary, we propose to represent the data as an attributed customer transaction bipartite graph. We then use the graph neural network to derive meaningful representations of behavior at the level of both customers and transactions, decoupled of any labels. And then we showcase how these representations can be used to derive AI-powered insights that can be used to assist in AML reviewing. And we provide examples of some of these insights. Uh, we have here three, three insights, the transaction clustering, the anomaly prediction, and the behavior analysis. Thank you very much.